In this video, we're going to see how we can use the Neo4j GraphQL plugin to create a GraphQL API for data in Neo4j using Neo4j Desktop. If you're not familiar with GraphQL, it's a relatively new way of building APIs. GraphQL allows us to specify what data is available in the API, and then for the client to select exactly the data that they're interested in in each request. You can learn more about GraphQL at graphql.org or on the Neo4j GraphQL developer page on neo4j.com. So as I said, we're going to be using Neo4j Desktop to install the Neo4j GraphQL plugin, which will enable us to serve a GraphQL endpoint directly from Neo4j. This plugin will also translate arbitrary GraphQL requests to Cypher and execute those in Neo4j. So what this means is that we don't have to implement what are known as resolver functions to build our GraphQL service. This is taken care of by the plugin. We'll also be making use of another tool called Graphical, which is an in-browser tool for exploring and querying GraphQL APIs. I'll be using the Electron app version of Graphical, which you can download from GitHub here. Okay, so let's jump over to Neo4j Desktop and get started. If you haven't used Neo4j Desktop before, it's a way of downloading and managing Neo4j instances uh, locally for development. It has uh, great tools for uh, inspecting the logs, uh, for getting uh, terminal access for some of the command line tooling for Neo4j, interface for updating settings. And what we're interested in uh, today is installing plugins. So we can install uh, APOC, the Graph Algorithms plugin, uh, or the GraphQL plugin directly from Neo4j Desktop. So I'm going to click Install and Restart uh, on the GraphQL plugin. Uh, by the way, before, uh, before we started, I downloaded a, a fresh install of Neo4j Desktop, and I just went ahead and created a project and created one local Neo4j graph uh, and set a, a default password. Uh, so that's the initial setup that I did. Um, so what's going on now, the GraphQL plugin uh, is being installed on our local Neo4j instance, and we're just restarting Neo4j. Uh, once that's available, uh, we can then open Neo4j browser, which is our query workbench for running Cypher queries against Neo4j. So we can verify that this Neo4j instance has no data. Uh, so match on, on all nodes, we return the count and, and we get zero. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a blank graph. Let's go ahead and insert some data. So I'm going to run colon play movies and click on this query here, which is just a bunch of create statements that will create uh, a small graph with some sample movie data. So we have data about uh, actors, the movies that they've acted in, uh, directors and writers, uh, and so on. Okay, and what we want to do is expose a GraphQL API that we can use to query this sample movie data in Neo4j. So there are a few different ways of using the Neo4j GraphQL plugin with Neo4j. Uh, the first is by using the data already in Neo4j to derive the GraphQL schema uh, and API. And we can do this by running the GraphQL.IDL procedure. Uh, IDL is just stands for Interface Definition Language, which is just a way of specifying uh, GraphQL schemas. But if we pass null into this procedure, uh, that means that we'll use the data already in Neo4j to, uh, to create our schema. So we run that. And let's switch over now to Graphical. So we said that Graphical is this tool for querying GraphQL endpoints, sort of like Postman uh, is to rest, if you're familiar with, with Postman. Uh, and the first thing I need to do, you can see we have some, some errors here. The first thing I need to do is put in 
my GraphQL endpoint. So because we have the Neo4j GraphQL extension installed, that means that Neo4j itself is serving our GraphQL endpoint. So localhost 7474 slash GraphQL is our GraphQL endpoint. Uh, and now I'm getting a no authentication header supplied error. So we've set a password on Neo4j, which means we need to add uh, our basic auth headers to our request in graphical. Uh, I like to use uh, this tool for generating our basic auth headers, basically uh, uh, base64 encoding of the username and password. And I'll drop a link to this tool uh, in the comments as well. But anyway, so we'll set uh, our header values. And now when we go back to graphical, we don't have the authorization error. Uh, instead, we have a way to explore the schema. So graphical will show us a sort of the schema specification for the API. And we can see that we have two entry points, movie and person. So let's go ahead and write a query here. Let's search for movie. Uh, let's find all the movies that were released in the year 2000. Uh, and oh, sorry, that should be released, not year and their title. Uh, we can also query for the actors and get their name. So what's going on here is we're sending this request as an HTTP post request to uh, localhost 7474 slash GraphQL. Near4j is acting as our GraphQL server and the Neo4j GraphQL plugin is translating this GraphQL request to the Cypher query necessary to resolve that information uh, and sending the data back, um, which is pretty cool. So that's one way of using Neo4j uh, and GraphQL together if we already have data uh, in the database. Uh, but what if, we, what if we're starting off from scratch with a new application? What if we don't have any data in here for J? Uh, what if we haven't defined um, a data model for our graph yet? Well, we can use what's called the GraphQL schema definition language to define a GraphQL schema. Uh, and I've gone ahead and done that here. So this is very similar to what we were working with before. We have uh, type movie. We have type person. We can see the fields available for each, ID, title, tagline, uh, the year the movie was released. Now this schema defines our GraphQL service. It defines the, the types and the fields available. But what we also have the power to do here is expose Cypher within GraphQL. So on this field here called recommended, we have a at cipher, uh, sort of an annotation. This is called a schema directive where we've annotated this field with a cipher query. So what this means is recommended then uh, becomes sort of a computed field where this cipher query is executed anytime that we request the recommended field on movie. But why is this useful? Well, in this case, uh, let's say we want to generate recommendations for a movie. Uh, so in this case, we're looking for people that have acted in this movie. What other movies have they acted in? That's a simple recommendation type query that we may want to use to generate movie recommendations. But you can imagine this being any uh, arbitrarily complex Cypher query. So what's really cool about this is that we're able to expose the power of Cypher uh, directly in GraphQL, uh, which I think is pretty neat. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this schema and go back to Neo4j browser. And this time when I run the graphql.idl procedure, I'm gonna pass in the schema that I just created uh, as a string. And we get back a response that says, okay, we're gonna be using this, uh, this schema for our GraphQL endpoint. 
Now we haven't created any data uh, in our graph yet. So that's the first thing that we should do. The way that we create data using GraphQL is with an operation called a mutation. Uh, I've gone ahead and uh, written out some mutations here for creating uh, movies, creating some people and connecting those people with the movies that they've acted in. Now, if we go back to graphical, we can inspect our mutation types that are available. These are automatically generated based on our schema. So we automatically get mutations for creating movies, creating person nodes, connecting movies uh, and people. But I'm gonna go ahead and run those mutations that I wrote out earlier for creating uh, just a handful of, of movies and people. And we get back uh, nodes and relationships created. We can jump back to Neo4j browser just to verify that we did create this data. And we can see, yep, we've created uh, a few movies and a few people that are connected to movies that they've acted in. Okay, so that's good. We, we did this just using GraphQL. And now let's query this data. So this time let's query for movie by title. Grab my favorite movie and we can just return the title. Um, but we can add uh, arbitrary fields as well. So the year it was released, um, the tagline. So you can see with any request, we're just specifying only the fields that we're interested in. And now we can run our recommended query to find similar movies that, okay, if you like a river runs through it, you might like these other two because they share similar actors. Cool. So we just looked at how to use the Neo4j GraphQL plugin with Neo4j desktop. If you're building a JavaScript application using GraphQL, there's also a JavaScript variant of this integration that's available on NPM called Neo4j GraphQL JS. It's designed to work with any of the JavaScript GraphQL implementations. And finally, I want to leave you with some resources for learning more about GraphQL and Neo4j. Uh, as I mentioned before, the GraphQL developer page on neo4j.com has an overview of the different ways of using GraphQL with Neo4j. Grandstack.io has lots of tutorials and content for building full stack applications with the Grandstack, which is GraphQL, React, Apollo, and Neo4j database. Uh, the code for these integrations is in the Neo4j GraphQL organization on GitHub. And finally, the Neo4j community Slack channel is a great way to interact with Neo4j developers and others in the community building applications with Neo4j. So I'd encourage you to, to join us on Slack. There's a channel devoted specifically to using GraphQL uh, with Neo4j. Thanks a lot.